So we've previously discussed some of the important features uh, that allow the heart and blood vessels to move fluids um, and transport oxygenated blood throughout the body. And so now I'm gonna discuss some of the um, things that happen to your heart and blood vessels um, as you age. And so first of all, there's a decrease in the amount of elasticity as well as in compliance in the aorta. Right, and so compliance, remember, is sort of that ability of an empty chamber to expand, right, and to um, increase its size in order to uh, accommodate and increase the blood flow. And the aorta is kind of the heart's major artery, the major artery leaving the heart, right? And so the major artery leaving the heart loses its ability to kind of respond to changes in pressure and expand its ability to hold more blood. And it also decreases in its elasticity, which means that even if it can expand to allow more blood in, it doesn't have the ability to kind of bounce back, um, which we look for in a blood vessel. And so as a result of these two changes to the aorta of the heart, we um, aged individuals tend to see an increase in their blood pressure. And that's because that decrease in elasticity makes blood vessels more rigid. And that means there's not as much room to expand outward. The smaller the tube, the greater the pressure when you have that same volume of blood flowing through, which will increase blood pressure. And that decrease in compliance means that the aorta can't expand in response to pressure in the same way that it normally did in a younger individual, and that lack of expansion can also lead to increased blood pressure. Um, what is known about this particular kind of aging of the heart phenotype is that it's highly affected by environmental factors. So both elasticity and compliance in our arteries are made or are decreased even further um, in response to smoking. Whereas exercise, particularly aerobic or cardiac exercise, can actually ameliorate some of these effects and maintain both elasticity and compliance in the arteries. And so the environment and kind of our own choices actually have some say over what happens to these particular age-related phenotypes in the heart. And one other thing that happens um, in the heart specifically is that there's a decrease in the number of a specific type of a receptor called adrenal receptors. And adrenal receptors are receptors that bind to epinephrine and norepinephrine inside the cardiac muscle or the heart muscle. And you can see those adrenal receptors here. Um, they're the BAR, transmembrane receptors in kind of that reddish color. And as they decrease in number, that makes heart muscle less sensitive to the effects of both epinephrine and norepinephrine. And not only do they decrease in number um, as we age, but they also decrease in sensitivity. And so you can see here in a normal heart, it takes one molecule of the ligand to activate this um, adrenal receptor and lead to heart contraction or contractility. Whereas in an aging heart, these receptors become less responsive and it requires more and more of the ligand itself epinephrine or norepinephrine to get the same effect. And so even though there's all these molecules here of this hormone, the adrenal receptor is not sensitive to them, which can lead to a decrease in contractility. <laughs> and ultimately, what this kind of decrease in number and sensitivity of receptors leads to is a change, is that the change to heart rate that should occur in response to epinephrine and norepinephrine happens much, much more slowly. And it decreases the maximum heart rate. And that can lead to an overall decrease in cardiac output, right? And so cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped out or stroke volume times the number of pumps or heart rate. And so by decreasing the maximum heart rate, that can be achieved, you ultimately decrease the cardiac output or the amount of oxygenated blood that gets out to the tissues. 
And your heart sometimes attempts to compensate for this by increasing the stroke volume or the amount of blood pumped with each pump. Um, but unfortunately, there's sort of a maximum level of stroke volume that the heart can really achieve. Um, and that's determined by that Frank Starling mechanism. And so the heart can only compensate for this decrease in heart rate so much by increasing stroke volume. Um, and ultimately, it won't be able to compensate fully, leading to that cardiac, out cardiac output decrease. Additionally, inside um, the blood vessels themselves, both arteries and veins, there is a lot of connective tissue, particularly to molecules called collagen and elastin. And usually what collagen and elastin do in a younger individual is give the arteries and veins elasticity and flexibility so that they can change um, shape and dilate and constrict in response to different signals. But in aged individuals, there's a cross-linking that can occur between collagen and elastin that make up the majority of the blood vessel walls. And that cross-linking of these molecules leads to less elasticity of the collagen and elastin and more rigidity. Those blood vessels are no longer able to bounce back in the same way. They're not able to stretch and accommodate changes to blood pressure, which ultimately um, means that they're not expanding in size when they need to um, because they're more rigid. This can actually increase blood pressure in older individuals. And this cross-linking of collagen and elastin is also affected by environmental factors. Smoking, poor diet, and lack of aerobic exercise can all lead to additional cross-linking of these two molecules and exacerbate uh, these changes to elasticity in blood vessels.